Hello everyone, it's Helen here with Helen with Helen. Thanks for joining me today. Today we are going to talk about esophagrams. If you've watched my channel, you already know I've had a lot of tests due to acid reflux. I've had Bravo studies, gastric emptying studies, esophageal manometries. I had the knee and fundiplication for acid reflux, but I have never had an esophagram. So when my doctor told me that we were going to have to have one of those done, I was slightly intrigued. I was thinking immediately that it was going to be similar to an esophageal manometry when they put that thing up your nose, down your throat, and then they check the motility of your esophagus. If you have not watched that video, please go and watch that video, especially if your doctor has ordered one of those for you. Um, it's definitely not the worst test in the world. It's just not the most comfortable test in the world. However, the doctor reassured me that the only thing going in the back of my throat this time would be the barium solution so that they could watch it go down the esophagus and take x-rays of it. So I was good to go there. So why would your doctor order one of these? There could be numerous reasons. The doctor is going to want to check your esophagus. They want to check the motility, like, okay, how's everything working and what does it look like? They may be checking for strictures, which is tightening of the esophagus due to um, scar tissue. So is food getting stuck? Are you able to swallow okay? What might be going on there? They'll be checking for ulcers, hiatal hernias, cancer, precancer. So there's so many different things that the doctor may be looking for when they order an esophagram for you. But rest assured, this test is super easy breezy. In fact, it only takes about 20 minutes start to finish. And so your doctor's probably going to send you over to a place, um, possibly um, just a doctor's clinic. They may send you over to an outpatient radiology, maybe to a hospital. They sent me to a radiology place, which was fine. Um, the day that you show up, you can't have anything to eat or drink for 12 hours. So nothing. You can't have water. You can't have food. You can't have anything. Usually they try to schedule these things first thing in the morning. That way, you know, you can go home and drink and eat because after you have this particular exam, they're going to want you to drink a lot of water because the barium that you will be swallowing is kind of like a chalky solution. So it tends to constipate people. It tends to get stuck. And so they're like, they want it to get out of you as soon as possible. So you show up there that day, you'll get checked in. Um, they will have somebody come and bring you back. Um, the good thing here is you don't have to change out of your um, your attire. So go in the most comfy clothes that you can possibly go in. Go in your sweatpants, your t-shirts, your yoga pants, whatever it is. Ladies, just wear a sports bra, but you can't have anything with metal. So don't wear your earrings, don't wear a bra, or they'll just make you take it off. So whatever you would like to do, but you're just better off just going in your comfy, cozy clothes, and then you don't even have to worry about it. Then they'll just take you right back to the x-ray room. So once I got back into the x-ray room, the doctor came in and it was really cool because it was the same exact doctor that I just had three months ago when I had biopsies done on my right breast because I ended up having to have a partial mastectomy. And so I already had a level of comfort with him because even if it's not a really big procedure, I always feel like we always have a little bit of anticipation, like, oh, what do I expect? But you know, you, you have those nerves going, even for the bravest of you, I know you do. Um, and so I just was kind of like, uh -uh, not knowing. And so when the doctor came in already, I felt comfortable. I was just like, hi, you know, and he was curious, like, what are you doing here again? <laughs> um, well, I had to explain to him, we woke a sleeping giant. That's what happened. We're going to call the sleeping giant my GI tract, my stomach. We already know um, because um, the last three months, ever since I had this surgery, um, something got stirred up in my stomach. Guys, you have to remember, I am finicky. My body is so finicky. You know, whether it be stress or medications, obviously the healing process of having a breast surgery, all of it, it has upset my stomach, my GI tract. It's not happy right now. And so we're just trying to get to the bottom of it, just making sure that nothing is wrong. Everything checks out because I haven't been feeling good. I've been struggling with, like I said, some GI symptoms and distress. I've been having reflux. I've been dealing with some nausea. I just overall have not been feeling good. And so my doctor is just like, we're just going to rule everything out. So we're going to do this esophagram. We're going to do an upper GI. We're going to do a lower GI. We're going to do a gastric emptying study. And we're just going to make sure everything checks out. And then you need to make sure that you're taking really, really, really good care of yourself. And so obviously the stress on my body over the last several months, um, just in the surgery itself, um, just going into the surgery between the biopsies and the mammograms and the ultrasounds and everything. I think the stress on my body has just really taken a little bit of a baby toll. And so 
This particular test though right here is not stressful, so I don't want to scare you guys. In fact, it was super easy. And so what the doctor did was is he had me go over to this x-ray machine where you are going to stand, at least for this, this part of it. He's gonna have you stand and then there's gonna be this thing in front of you that's going to be able to check your esophagus and your stomach real time. So he's gonna have a screen right here where he's gonna be able to see everything. You're just gonna be standing here and then he's gonna be doing his thing. You're gonna be doing your thing. I did see on a little metal tray where there were several glasses. Um, I was assuming that they were going to be for me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have to drink every single one of those. Now, I wasn't ecstatic about that because I'm obviously already finicky. You haven't eaten for 12 hours. I've been dealing with nausea. I've been dealing with upset stomach and reflux. So everything on that tray did not look appealing to me. I was just hoping that I was not going to get sick because you know, if you get online, you start watching some of the videos, you hear like, oh, it can cause nausea. It can cause this, it can cause that. Really, there's hardly any side effects with this. The only thing that they said like to maybe watch is constipation. And so after you get done having this procedure, they want you to drink a lot of water. So just make sure that you are just ready to go all day long. Just make sure you're sipping on water, you're drinking water, and you can go back to your normal diet too. So just whatever it is that you feel like eating, that you're comfortable eating, just go back to it. And then what they want you to do is just get it flushed out in the next couple of days. They say it's supposed to be white. So there you go. <laughs> I know this channel is always a little TMI, but you need to know that's what they're looking for. They just want it out of you, right? Because it's just a barium solution. All right, so we've got the metal tray. Um, the first thing they do is they hand me a big glass and it's a heavy glass, right? It's a styrofoam glass, but it's relatively full. And I'm thinking there's absolutely no way I'm gonna be able to drink this whole entire glass. There's just no way. And there was like four other ones <laughs> sitting over there. So I'm like, hmm. Um, so they have me take a sip and they know they said take a drink and hold it and then he'll tell you when to swallow and so that's exactly what you did you got it in your mouth and then when he was ready for me he'd say swallow and then it would go down and so we did this a series of time I'm gonna be honest I was not gulping the solution so I'm thinking there's no way I'm gonna get through this I was taking sips I would say relatively big sips but I was not gulping it I was not filling my mouth and then trying to get it to go down I was just taking as much as I possibly could and obviously that was enough because the doctor didn't tell me otherwise wise. And so I would take the sip, get it in my mouth, get it ready. And they would say swallow. And there we did that. So we did that a few times. And then I had to turn to the side and obviously do it more just different angles. So they could get different angles as he watched it go down and watched what it was doing. Another thing that they had me do prior to drinking that um, barium solution, which this part right here was probably the trickiest part for me. I'm glad that we didn't forget to mention this. Um, in fact, anybody who suffers with reflux and drinking carbonated drinks, this is probably the part that you wouldn't love either is they have you drink a Dixie cup full of like pop rocks. <laughs> They're not actual pop rocks, but however, that is what the doctor said. Like, have you ever had pop rocks? Um, because this is going to be really comparable. So you're going to put these into your mouth, a Dixie cup full, the whole thing into your mouth, and they're going to start popping. And then I'm going to give you a Dixie cup full of water and you're going to go, and you're going to get them to go down really, really fast. And he wanted to see like what would happen there. And so that was the first thing they had me do before I started drinking the barium solution. I thought that I'd be a lot more sick than I was because obviously if you're an acid reflux sufferer, you do not do well with carbonated anything. And pop rocks were the worst thing for me on my best day. <laughs> so when he, all he had to do was say the word pop rocks and already I was like, <sighs> um, however, it went down, it seemed to be okay. And then obviously then we started in with the barium solutions and taking the x-rays and turning to the side. And then when we were done with that, at this point I could already tell, I think this is where they said that some people start to deal with nausea because that is one of maybe the side effects that you could have just really short term while it's kind of going down because there's a lot of things happening. Um, however, I did not deal with it that morning. So I'm happy to say that he did say now we're going to lean back so what they do is they have you continue to stand on this machine that actually reclines you and brings you all the way back and then they had me roll over onto my stomach which is not the most comfortable thing especially if you're not feeling well however they have you lay on your stomach and then they have you put your head to the side and then they have you drinking out of a straw more of that solution to kind of see how it looks as it's going down while you're laying on your stomach and then after they're done with that they have you just come back upright and then they bring you another glass and then they give you a pill. And if you're anything like me, I don't do really well with swallowing pills. So I would say it's about that. I would say it was a little smaller than probably a dime. So it wasn't huge, but 
I don't love pills at all. In fact, you already know if you watch some of my videos, um, instead of my doctors giving me pills, especially ever since I've had my surgeries and all my like reflux issues, they actually do a lot of drip IV for me. So if I'm going to ever get anything, they're usually going to give me like a drip IV instead of making me, making me take a bottle of antibiotics just because I don't digest things well. I suffer from acid reflux, obviously the gastroparesis and so on and so forth. So swallowing pills is a little bit intimidating for me. Maybe it is for you as well. But he said that this was a very important part of the test because they needed to see what would happen with this pill, if it would go down, if it would get stuck, and what would happen to this pill. And so this was the last part of the test. And so he gave me a glass of water and then gave me the pill. And he said, okay, put it in your mouth. And then he told me when to swallow again. And I did. And I was a little concerned it was going to get stuck. However, it didn't. He said, it's on its way down. It's heading down. It's going down the esophagus. And it was relatively fast too. I mean, this thing just flowed on down. And he said, okay, it's made it down to buy where the stomach is and your wrap. He goes, now we're going to sit here. We're going to drink some more water. And I'm going to tell you when it goes through the stomach. And I was like, okay. And so we waited and we waited and we waited <laughs> and we drank more water. We drank more water. We drank more water. The pill wouldn't go anywhere. The pill was stuck. And so I don't know what that means. He said that that would be good information for the doctor. And I thought, Okay, so I guess I'll know what that means here soon after the doctor gives me my results and tells me what it looked like. However, the pill never made its way down. He wasn't concerned because he said it was um, similar to the same solution that I had been drinking as they had been checking the esophagus, so it should not be a problem. However, when I left um, the place that day, the pill was still right there, not moving. So that's what happened there. But I don't know if that is anything that I really should be concerned about or not, considering it kind of landed where my niece and fundiplication wrap is. That's where I I've had my surgery for my reflux. That's where it decided it wanted to hang out at. So we'll know more information soon. He did say that they did not see any strictures, which is a good thing. So no tightening of the esophagus, at least to what he could see yet. Um, he just kind of gave me an update of some of the stuff that he said or that he's seen. He said that he did not see any hiatal hernias. That's a really good thing. I wasn't anticipating there to be a hiatal hernia, but there was no hernias. Um, however, he did say that there was a little bit of shadowing and indentation, and sometimes that could be linked to potential precancer or cancer. However, he was not concerned about that just due to the fact because he said the indentation and some of that is over by where the wrap is. So obviously, if you have a knee and fundiplication wrap, you're going to have some indentation. You're going to have some different things that are going to look a little bit funny on camera. And so he said that's probably normal with just the surgery so he wasn't super alarmed there however we'll know more here in the future and we'll obviously know more when the doctor goes in on the 13th and does the upper scope and the lower scope and just go from there and so I don't believe there's anything really to worry about at this point I'll know more probably this week when I get the results back from the doctor's office but guys that is the procedure that is it in a nutshell and then you are done you are able to go home and just drink lots of fluid eat your food and get back on with your day you can go back to work and there's absolutely nothing else to worry about. So I hope that this helped anybody whose doctor has ordered you an esophagram. And I hope that you are staying healthy out there. And if nothing else, if you're having some, some different stomach issues, this is definitely um, a good first line test, you know, to kind of see what's maybe going on. And so maybe ask your doctor about this too, before you jump in and get anything super invasive. It might be just something that you need and maybe you won't have to get any of the other tests, at least not right away. So I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.